Welcome, weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Will the world end soon? Do the pyramids of Egypt predict our upcoming demise on September 23rd? Does the Bible point to this specific date as the beginning of the apocalypse? Some will call these predictions heresy or madness. Others, however, are not so quick to dismiss them. In this episode, authors Billy Hallowell and Rob Waugh give us separate opinions so you can make up your own mind. If you're new to Weird Darkness, here you'll find ghost stories, unsolved mysteries, and other stories of the strange and bizarre. I'm always looking for both fiction and nonfiction stories of the paranormal, strange, supernatural, dark, and creepy. You can even send me links to articles, creepypastas, and other stories you find online that you feel would be great for the show, which is exactly what happened with this episode. Share all of your ideas with me at WeirdDarkness.com. Music in this episode is provided by Shadows Symphony. You can find them online at Facebook.com slash Shadows Symphony. Now, sit back, turn down the lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. Will the world end on September 23rd? Here's the complete story on the latest Armageddon claim, written by Billy Hallowell for Faithwire. There have been quite a few murmurs and even fears among some cohorts over an impending date, September 23rd. Why, you ask? Well, some believe the day will usher in events of great prophetic significance. It's become such a prevalent topic in some circles that Answers in Genesis, a Christian ministry, decided to address it in a blog post earlier this year, explaining what exactly is sparking so much interest in what would generally be deemed a regular Saturday. Quote, On this date, the Sun will be in the constellation Virgo, the Virgin, along with the Moon near Virgo's feet. Additionally, Jupiter will be in Virgo, while the planets Venus, Mars, and Mercury will be above and to the right of Virgo in the constellation Leo." Unquote. Answers in Genesis explained. Some people claim that this is a very rare event, alleged only once in 7,000 years, and that it is supposedly a fulfillment of a sign in Revelation chapter 12. Before we continue, perhaps it's prudent to look at Revelation 12 to see what language, if any, might lead people to assume that there's some sort of end times connection to this celestial happening. A quick look at the chapter does reveal some interesting text. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. With all of this in mind, the central claim is that the alignment of the constellations, Sun and Moon, will somehow be a celestial representation of what's described in Revelation chapter 12. Creation.com recently tackled this issue and skeptically questioned why so many people find the need to try and tie specific and definitive events with prophecy and the biblical end times. The website cited Matthew 24, verse 36, a verse that reads, But concerning that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only, and said the following. So what would the woman be? Apparently Virgo, the Virgin, the second largest constellation by area in the sky after Hydra. However, there is no historical relation between the constellation and the Virgin Mary or any other biblical woman until the Middle Ages. Long before that time, the Greeks and Romans mostly identified the constellation with Demeter Ceres, the goddess of harvest. Other candidates include the Roman virgin goddess of justice, Justitia, or the Greek virgin goddess of purity, Astraea. So there is no indication that the writer of Revelation had this constellation in mind. So we don't agree with gospel-in-the-stars ideas for that reason. 
also because of its implicit denial of the sufficiency of Scripture. The above should be enough to exercise proper biblical discernment, but what about other claims? First, the Sun will be in Virgo. But since Virgo is part of the zodiac, this happens once per year by definition. The Sun spends about a month in each of the twelve signs. The zodiac is the sky around the ecliptic, the apparent path the Sun traces in the sky, or under the correct geokinetic model, the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Another supposed sign is the Moon at the feet of Virgo. But since the Moon orbits the Earth once per month, and the Sun stays a month in each, it's not surprising that one or two days every year both the Sun and Moon will be in Virgo. Both Answers in Genesis and Creation.com conclude that likely nothing is slated to happen on September 23rd, and that biblical prophecy in the eyes of those ministries isn't likely to come to fruition on that day. Christians need to be careful about being drawn into such sensationalist claims, Creation.com warned. And Christopher Graney, writing for Earth Sky, noted that the woman clothed with the sun with the moon at her feet is just as common in September as is Labor Day, due in part to the Earth's orbit, so this arrangement isn't exactly rare. Graney wrote, There's always a day or two every year when the sun is in Virgo and the moon is just to the east of Virgo, just past the feet. He continued, But what of the crown of twelve stars comprised of three planets and the nine stars of Leo? The response to this question is another question. Why nine stars in Leo? There are many more than nine stars in Leo. Those nine are just brighter ones that are often depicted as compromising the general outline or shape of the constellation. But in fact, there are scads of stars in Leo and surrounding the head of Virgo. And yes, multiple planets being at Virgo's head while Jupiter is in Virgo's center and the Moon is at Virgo's feet is somewhat unusual. But it is not that unusual. The period of Jupiter's orbit is a little less than 12 years, and therefore Jupiter will be in Virgo, with the Sun there too and the Moon at the feet, once every 11 or 12 years. In the end, the arrangement has happened more frequently than the once in 7,000 years that some are claiming. In fact, we know it happened in 1827, 1483, 1293, and 1056, all in the month of September. We should also note that some of these September 23 theories also appear to revolve around Planet X, also known as Nibiru. NASA has actually covered the topic on its website considering that the purported planet has been discussed in the past as the potential catalyst for Earth's destruction. The story started with claims that Nibiru, a supposed planet discovered by the Sumerians, is headed toward Earth, NASA noted back in 2012. This catastrophe was initially predicted for May 2003, but when nothing happened, the doomsday date was moved forward to December 2012 and linked to the end of the cycles in the ancient Mayan calendar at the winter solstice in 2012, hence the predicted doomsday date of December 21, 2012. Clearly, the Earth didn't end on any of those dates, though a new book titled Planet X – The 2017 Arrival, written by author David Mead, is being credited with helping fuel speculation once again about the purported planet. The book's description reads, This book is a compendium of information from every sphere – astronomical, scientific, the book of revelation and geopolitics. It contains absolutely amazing revelations that direct us to one precise point in time in 2017. Planet X is a cryptogram and this book contains the keys necessary to decode it. When everything is considered together, it fits together perfectly like a watch. The existence of Planet X is beyond any reasonable doubt, to a moral certainty. We examine proofs of its existence. I have seen Planet X on the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer WISE, through the Worldwide Telescope. This is a NASA Infrared Wavelength Astronomical Space Telescope launched in December 2009. It is currently in the constellation Pisces and is clearly marked as an unidentified object, but quite plainly is visible as a dark red star known as IC 5385. 
Reactions to Meade's claims haven't been too favorable, with Metro, among other outlets, calling people who push the narrative internet YouTube weirdos. Up next, I'll share that Metro article with you. There is a knock at the door late at night. You answer it to find two small children standing there. You're suddenly filled with an inexplicable fear. Let us in, they say. We need to use the phone. It is at that point that the fear turns to utter dread as you see that these kids have completely black eyes. The Black Eyed Kids is an exploration of this terrifying phenomenon using true stories of encounters with black eyed kids submitted to the My Haunted Life 2 website. G. Michael Vasey examines the evidence and investigates the terrifying BEK phenomenon, coming to some startling and shocking conclusions. Are they demonic soul eaters responsible for the disappearance of some of the 90,000 Americans missing at any point in time? Or is this just another urban legend, another boogeyman designed to keep you awake at night? Listen to the book and find out. The Black Eyed Kids by G. Michael Vasey. Hear a free sample or purchase the title by clicking the link in this show's description. The Apocalypse will begin on September 23rd, and it's written in the pyramids, author claims. Written by Rob Woe for Metro. You might have already noticed some of the early signs of the apocalypse. Brexit, Donald Trump, Taylor Swift's new video. The end is definitely coming, according to one author and a lot of other internet YouTube weirdos, and it'll all kick off this month, around the 23rd, when a death planet will become visible in the sky. We'll all die in the next month or so, according to David Mead, author of Planet X, the 2017 arrival. The reason David Mead is so certain that death planet Nibiru is going to kill us all is that he claims it's written in both the Bible and the pyramids. No one else thinks that. But hey, when has that stopped a good conspiracy theory? Mead says it's very strange indeed that both the Great Sign of Revelation 12 and the Great Pyramid of Giza both points us to one precise moment in time, September 20-23 in 2017. Is this the end of the church age and the transition to the day of the Lord? There couldn't be two greater witnesses. Mead, author of Planet X, the 2017 arrival, says Nibiru is inbound and will destroy us all next month. Just to bring you up to speed, conspiracy theorists have predicted that an unseen planet beyond Neptune called Nibiru, or Planet X, is going to destroy the Earth. It was predicted to destroy Earth in December 2015. September 2015, during the Mayan apocalypse of 2012 and in 2003. Mead's prediction is largely based on the Bible passage Isaiah chapter 13 verses 9 through 10, which says, "See the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land desolate and destroy the sinners within it. The stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light." What is Nibiru, and should we be scared? For decades, conspiracy theorists have predicted that an unseen planet beyond Neptune called Nibiru, or Planet X, is going to destroy Earth. But in case you're worried, you should note that Nibiru, or Planet X, was widely predicted to hit our planet in December 2015 and before that in September. Prior to that, it was predicted to smash into our planet to coincide with the Mayan Apocalypse in 2012. And before that, Nancy Leiter, an American website writer who claimed to have an alien implant in her brain, predicted it would destroy the world in 2003. NASA has thoroughly debunked the Nibiru myth via its Beyond 2012 page, saying, Nibiru and other stories about wayward planets are an internet hoax. There is no factual basis for these claims. If Nibiru or Planet X were real and headed for an encounter with the Earth, astronomers would have been tracking it for at least the past decade, and it would be visible by now to the naked eye. 
Soviet-born American writer Zachariah Sitchin first wrote about Nibiru in his hit 1976 book The Twelfth Planet, where he claimed it was inhabited by a race of ancient aliens, the Anunnaki, who had created the human race. Sitchin's work remains in print and has a devoted following around the world. Nigel Watson, author of the UFO Investigations Manual, says Zechariah Sitchin claims that Nibiru collided with a planet called Tiamat that was situated between Mars and Jupiter. The result was the creation of the asteroid belt and planet Earth. Nibiru is populated by the Anunnaki, an advanced humanoid race who visited Earth thousands of years ago to mine gold in Africa. As an outcome of needing workers to carry out these mining operations, they used genetics to create Homo sapiens. The popularity of these types of ideas makes it certain that every new discovery by our spaceships will be minutely studied for any evidence of Nibiru or any other similar body that might be populated by extraterrestrials. Well, Weirdo family, what do you think will happen September 23rd? Leave your prediction below in the comments, and be sure to share this video with everyone you know before September 23rd arrives. You can never be too careful. To become an official weirdo, click that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. While you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you are an official weirdo. And thanks for joining me in the weird darkness.